Trump just turned to the Pope Francis and said six words he will never forget. A lone American flag hung above the entryway to Pope Francis' Apostolic Palace in Vatican City on Wednesday as U.S. President Donald Trump arrived for the third leg of his tour of the world's great religions. Trump met Pope Francis on the fifth day of his first foreign presidential trip, after visiting the cradles of Islam and Judaism. While their discussion will remain private, the president had a brief message for Francis as he left. I won't forget what you said. It's such an honor, he said as he shook the pontiff's hand and posed for photos in the Sala del Trinito, the second floor little throne room. Thank you very much. This is such a great honor, Trump was later heard saying as he and Francis sat across a desk from each other to begin their talks in his private study. The Pope presented Trump with a medal with a picture of an olive tree and told him, It is my desire that you become an olive tree to construct peace. Trump replied, We could use peace. He tweeted on his way to the airport, Honor of a lifetime to meet His Holiness Pope Francis. I leave the Vatican more determined than ever to pursue peace in our world. After they emerged from their talks, Francis was grinning from ear to ear as he met other members of the first family. What do you give him to eat? He asked Melania Trump in Italian, referring to the president's hawking size. Potica? Potica. A delighted Melania responded, laughing. Potica is a Slovenian nut roll dessert. The Pope blessed a rosary in her hand before greeting Abka Trump and her husband Jared Kushner, along with Secretary of State Rex Tillerson and other U.S. officials. Melania followed the papal meeting with a visit to a Vatican-owned children's hospital. She told Francis, I'm glad to visit the hospital, for the bambinos. What do you think about this comment below, t below, Barack and Michelle's vacation just came to an abrupt end after receiving devastating news. Just because Obama is out of the White House, it doesn't mean he's finished parading around like he's the freaking king of planet Earth. Over the week, The former narcissist-in-chief and Michelle traveled for their lavish vacation in Italy, where they had to make sure that the world knew they were arriving. The royal couple conspicuously arrived in the central Italian region on Friday, where their private jet was escorted by an alarming six fighter jets, complete with a 13-car motorcade, that we are paying for, as they headed to a $15,000 a night private villa. But unfortunately for Obama and his American-hating wife. They just had their entire opulent vacation completely wrecked, after receiving devastating news that even their endless stacks of money will be helpless to shield them from. Throughout his two terms in office, Obama and Michelle lived high on the hog thanks to the American taxpayers, as they jet set around on our dime with their luxurious excursions whenever their black little hearts had half an inkling. Obama exploited his presidential position by utilizing Air Force One as his personal taxi service to fly all over the world, while racking up a colossal amount of money to the tune of almost $1 billion that the American taxpayers had to foot the bill for. But now that Obama and his snotty wife are out of office, their narcissism and contempt for the American people are now coming back to bite them in the ass in a massive way. The Judicial Watch Group just announced their plans to sue the U.S. Division of Homeland Security, after the government agency flat out refused to react to the FOIA requests they made on March 24, 2017, where the watchdog group asked for all Secret Service records relating to Barack Obama's post administration trips that he continues to take on our dime. From Judicial Watch Judicial Watch announced that it obtained records from the Secret Service and the Air Force in response to Freedom of Information Act FOIA, requests that show Obama family travel cost taxpayers a grand total of $99,714,527.82. The new Obama White House Air Travel Records Show The March 2014 trip to Key Largo during spring break where the first family stayed at the exclusive Ocean Reef Club, cost the Secret Service $247,827.50, $182,120.33 for hotels and $65,707.17 in travel expenses. 
the total cost of that trip with previously released $885,683 and flight costs from the Air Force is $1,133,510.50. Other documents show that Michelle Obama's February 2015 Aspen vacation cost the Secret Service a total of $64,807.41, $47,109.28 for hotels, $3,559.43 in rental cars and $14,138.70 in other travel expenses. The total cost of the trip with $57,068.80 in flight costs from previously released Air Force records is $121,876.21. Judicial Watch released documents from the Air Force concerning the 2016-2017 Obama family Christmas trip to Honolulu showing 17.9 hours flying at $142,380 per hour bringing the total flight cost to $2,548,602. Yes you read that correctly. The Obamas leached a whopping $1 billion freaking dollars from Americans for all their lavish vacations. But Judicial Watch isn't quite done socking it to Barack and Michelle. They also announced this week that they have filed a Freedom of Information Act FOIA lawsuit against the U.S. Department of Homeland Security for secret service records associated with President Obama's movements, schedule, and activities since his departure from the White House. The lawsuit was filed in the U.S. District Court for the District of Columbia, Judicial Watch v. U.S. Department of Homeland Security, No. 1, 17 CV00928, Conservative Fighters Reported. Here's the information that Judicial Watch is seeking from the FOIA request, that the Secret Service still refuses to hand over, as reported by conservative fighters. All records of former President Barack Obama's movements, schedule, activities, and, or meeting for January 21, 2017 through March 21, 2017. Such records include, but are not limited to, U.S. Secret Service schedules and activity reports. Although Obama is no longer in office, he continues to receive Secret Service protection at taxpayer expense. In January, the Obama family traveled to Palm Springs, California The former president also spent a few weeks in French Polynesia. It looks like Obama's dirty deeds are finally coming to light, thanks to the determination of this watchdog group who has made it their mission to find the truth no matter how many of Obama's little minions stand in the way. Obama is such a massive disgrace to this nation. Not only did he commit treason throughout his time in office, but he continually showed how much contempt he held for Americans as he and his disgusting family jet set around on our dime, while at the same time lecturing Americans, who he views as mere peasants, about how they need to make sacrifices in life, in life, snowflakes who walked out of Benz's Notre Dame speech get devastating news. On Sunday, Notre Dame University students walked out of their own graduation ceremony as Vice President Mike Pence gave the commencement address. Immediately after the protest, however, this move came back to bite these liberal snowflakes in a big way. Mad World News reported that social media personality Chad Brather fired back at these students with a Facebook rant that included three words that they won't be forgetting anytime soon. Employers.go find the video of the college grads at Notre Dame walking out on the vice president's commencement speech, he said. Remember their faces and don't make the mistake of hiring them. As a boss, you will do and say things they disagree with and their feelings will be hurt. This is how they respond to disappointment. I have a strong feeling they will be experiencing a lot of it in the years to come, he continued. The Texas Cowboy went on to say that this is nothing more than the product of a generation that wasn't properly disciplined. This little juvenile protest demonstrates the fact that this generation has never been held accountable with consequences from their actions, he concluded. If one of my kids walked out on Joe Biden in that fashion, there would have been hell to pay. Believe that. Twitter users made it clear that they agreed with Prather. Share this story if you think these Notre Dame snowflakes were wrong to walk out on Pence. What do you think about this comment below? below.
Look what happened immediately after President Trump landed in Belgium. President Trump landed in Brussels Wednesday afternoon in the latest stop of his first foreign trip, touching down in a city he had previously called a hellhole. His first meeting was with Belgium's Prime Minister, Charles Michel, who greeted him as Air Force One landed. But the main focus of his trip to the Belgian capital is for a NATO summit. Trump is harshly critical of NATO as a candidate, declaring the military alliance obsolete. He has also criticized member countries for not following NATO guidelines to spend at least 2% of their gross domestic product on defense. The president has been similarly critical of Brussels, the Belgian capital that is home to both the NATO and European Union headquarters. After the city's recent struggles with terrorism, Trump called Brussels a hellhole. Brussels is Trump's fourth stop on his maiden overseas tour. His fifth and final stop will be Sicily, where he'll meet with the leaders of the group of seven wealthy nations. NATO is rolling out the red carpet for Trump in Brussels. The military alliance, which Trump once declared obsolete, has been busy repackaging its image and is ready to unveil a new headquarters worth more than 1 billion euros. In recent months, member nations have strained to show they are ramping up defense spending as Trump has demanded, even though they have been doing so for a few years in response.